So let's have a look at task 2a part 2 and you'll see here we've got a series of little comment boxes all numbered. Best way to tackle this is start at the first number and work your way down. So number one insert item costs in b3 to b9. So we need to get the items from b3 of the dippers right down to the goodie bag. Now remember this information is held in the price list so the way to bring it over is to click in the first cell and cell B3 equals and then I'm going to click onto the price list and I'm going to click on my mozzarella dippers and I see that I've got here there's five bits of food to come across so I'll do the first one B3 and then I can copy down down to, I'm going to copy in 5, down to B7 because the silver foil balloons is actually further down in the price list. So to get that, I'm going to do equals again, back to my price list, find the silver foil per letter, the 899, click on it in B10, press enter, and then the goodie bag, same again, equals price list and then the goodie bag is slightly further down in cell B13. So there we have all the item costs from B3 to B9. Now I would suggest that you can either delete the comments, but if you're not too comfortable deleting it just yet, hide it by right clicking and then if you hide the note. Let's move on to number two. Insert the number of balloons required. Now you'll see here in the notes down here, talks about the balloons should spell Kaylee and it talks about the silver foil letter balloon per letter. So they obviously want in their Kaylee huge big balloons um, spelling out the word Kaylee. So all you need to do is actually look at the word Kaylee and look at how many letters there are. There are seven. So if they want seven different seven different letters at 8 19 in each, you insert seven. And again what I would do is I would just right click and just hide the note. Now let's look at number three. Each person attending the Kaylee should receive a goodie bag. Each person attending. So how many people are attending? Again looking at the information that we do have it says 150 tickets have now been sold. So we can assume that 150 people will be attending. So in cell uh, C9 I'm going to put in 150 and then I'm going to, oops, 150, should I say there, and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to hide the note. Next, insert appropriate formula in cells D3 down to D9. So we have a cost and we have a quantity. So we're going to have to do cost times quantity to get total cost. Click in cell D3 and type in equals. Let's click on the first um, cost the mozzarella dippers, which is in B3, do the asterisk, and then we're going to click on C3. It's a multiplication, and then enter. And we've done it once, so we can actually copy it down, make your white cross into thin black cross, bottom right hand side, or you can just double click quickly, and then you can copy down to B uh, C9. Sorry, D9. All right, let's go back up. And let's, oh, in fact, sorry, what I need to do is, I've, I've missed one out here, let's also include the goodie bag. So let's go back up here and let's hide that note. Number five is inserting two rows above the band members' wages and then complete these rows from the minutes and the price list. So in cell, um, um, you'll see there row, row A10, I'm going to just right click and I'm going to do insert and I'm going to right click again and I'm going to insert. There's obviously information, more costings that needs to go in here. So let's just go back and have a look at our price list and see what we've got here. And I, oh, I see there's a selfie mirror and there's a prize of a luxury holiday stay because the note said they want a selfie mirror, they don't want a photographer, but they are going to be having a prize of luxury stay. So I'm going to type in here, selfie mirror, I can actually put in the quantity because I know it's one of and they also want the prize of the luxury hotel stay 
and we know they're looking for two of that. But we need to bring the prices now across. So same as what we did with the, the food items, click on equals, back to your price list, find the selfie mirror, the £250, click on that cell and press enter. Same with the prize of the luxury uh, stay, equals, go back to the price list and the luxury stay is there and that's you brought it across. Now what I can do is I can hide that note. All right, and actually what I could do here is because I've now got more, more costs here, I could just copy the formula down here to incorporate the selfie mirror and also the luxury hotel stay. Let's have a look at number six. Number six is asking us to insert a formula to calculate the band members' wages. Now, if you remember from the price list, we know we're going to pay them £25 on a basic rate and £35 for an overtime rate. They're probably getting overtime for working late into the night. So going back to the cost statement then, do we have anything else in the information? Well, if we look down here at the notes, it says to us, the four band members will each work five hours. Two of these hours will be paid at an overtime rate. So they're working for five hours. So if two hours are overtime, that means that three hours must be the basic rate. So what we're thinking here is we have to take three hours at the basic rate plus two hours at the overtime rate and apply that to all four band members. And this is how we do it. So in cell D12, and you'll notice there's it's grayed out here. So this is indicating this is not for you to put anything in here. The whole formula has to go into the one cell in D12. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to do equals and it's three, as in three hours, and the rate is in the price list here, so click on there, and then we're gonna do plus, and we know they're getting two hours of overtime, so two times the overtime. Remember the word basic and overtime is appearing in your formula because you named these cells in the last task. And then we're going to multiply by all four band members. But what to do first is put a bracket around your basic and your overtime rates. So it will work out three times basic plus two times overtime and then it will multiply by all four band members and press enter and there you see that the total uh, cost of the wages is going to be £580. We can go back up and let's just hide that note. Now number seven insert a formula to calculate the total cost of the event. So we have all our costs down here. In cell D13, it's a very simple auto sum. Click on the auto sum top right hand corner there. Check it's highlighting the cost that you want. In this case, yes, it is cell, from cells D3 to D12. Just press enter. And there we have the cost of the total cost of the Keeley. Up to the comment and hide it. Number 10, insert a formula to calculate the, the cost per person. And that's asking for us to do it in cell D15. So we know what the total cost is. We know how many people are going because we've sold 150 tickets. So simply it's going to be a dividing formula. Start with equals, click on the total cost, divided by forward slash 150 and you'll see that the price, well, it's it's far too many decimal places, and we'll format that in, in a moment or two, um, but it's £18.50 18, 18 per person. So let's just hide that note as well. All right, then. Number eight is, and I see I've just done this out of sequence, actually, but never mind. Uh, number eight is saying, insert a formula to calculate if the event is within budget. Well, we can see it's going to cost £2,775 for this event, but note in the notes it says the budget for the Cayley is £2,500. So it's asking a question, a yes no question, is it within budget? I can say no, it's not within budget, but using a formula we could actually use an if statement for this. So what we can do is in cell D13, what we're saying is, is 
equals if and open the bracket and what are we asking what is the logical test we're saying if the cost in the cell above if the cost in cell d13 is greater than 2500 and if I do a little comma, it's going to jump and it's going to ask me the question, if that is true, if it's greater than 2,500, then no, it's not within budget. So if I just do the word no with speech marks, otherwise, all right, if it's not that, it's going to be on budget. So the answer would be yes, within budget and close the bracket. So that is an if statement you have to do. If the cost is greater than the budget of 2,500, then the word no will appear. It is not within budget. Otherwise, yes, it is within budget. And press enter. And of course, it has come up, rightly so, as no. And we can just delete that note as well. And then we have here uh, number nine. Now, did it out with seconds. If you remember, we worked out the cost by doing the dividing, but it is looking for a label in cell A15 as uh, for the cost per person. And it does want it to be bold, so I could just go up back to my home tab and click on bold, and then we can um, hide the note there. And then it's got the very last thing is format all cells appropriately, of course, because we can see we've been dealing with pounds and pence. So looking at the item costs here, we do have decimal places, we do have pounds and pence, so therefore, quickest way up to the, the number tab to general, hit currency. And that will do it for you. And equally, we can do the same for um, the total cost. And in fact, the cost per person, we could just quickly do the same. And that is how you complete the second part of task 2A. Let me just hide that note. So the last thing we need to do is think about printing and what we're going to print. You'll see here from the instructions, you print one copy in value view. That's what you're looking at right now. Portrait with grid lines only. So what I suggest you do is I first of all highlight the data that you are going to be printing. Go to page layout, check orientation. And we are sitting in portrait. That's what we want. That's absolutely fine. If you go further along and look to sheet options, you'll notice there that the grid lines and headings are text. We can see the grid lines and the row and column headings. But for printing purposes, I'm going to check the grid lines box for printing, but leave the headings box blank. And that will ensure I'm printing off the grid lines only. Second sheet you have to print off is same but showing formula. Remember, to show formula is you hit the control key and the shoulder key, that's the button below the escape key, and that uh, brings your formulas up. Remember also that if you have a situation where you have quite a long formula and it's not all seen, please make sure that you widen your columns to make sure that the full formula can be seen. And equally, for printing purposes, you could actually narrow your columns down just a little bit to make sure that everything is going to fit when you print it. And remember, this one has to get changed to orientation to landscape. And then also it is for grid lines and for the row and column heading. So you've got to go back and you've got to check that box as well. To bring it back to what you had to value view, control, shoulder key brings it back. Because I narrowed a few columns, I'm going to have to widen them just again, just so we can we can see them. And then the last thing is just to remind you that when you are printing, you need to ensure that you put a footer on your document to show your name and your candidate number. And remember to go to footer, insert along to the text box, and then you've got your headers and footers options there. So that is how you do task 2a part 2